Mandatory evacuation of civilians has been announced in Kupiansk, as well as in the neighboring Kondrashevskia, Kirilovskia and Petropavlovskia communities of the Kharkiv region. This was reported by the head of the regional military administration Oleg Senegibov on the air of the Ukrainian Telethon. According to him, the indicated settlements are located quite close to the front line. The military situation is currently worsening. Due to the fact that we cannot ensure the heating season there, provide electricity, or provide humanitarian aid, Senegibov noted. He linked the need for evacuation with the ongoing shelling. Senegibov noted that at the moment there are about 4,000 residents left in Kupiansk, most of whom are elderly people. In addition, the Kharkiv authorities have decided to forcibly evacuate families with children from the Borovskaya community of the Izium district. According to Senegibov, there are 250 such families in the village. The head of the regional military administration added that evacuation measures will be intensified, since local residents are reluctant to leave their homes. As Senegibov explained, the evacuation is being announced due to the fact that Russian troops have approached the Oskol River, which partially flows through the territory of the Kharkov region. Kupiansk is located on the eastern bank of the river. According to the Ministry of Defense's report of October 14, fighting in the Kupiansk direction continues, Russian troops are advancing, occupying more advantageous lines and positions. In early October, the author of the Rybar Telegram channel, Mikhail Zvinchuk, reported that the Russian armed forces were continuing their offensive in the Kupiansko-Svatovsky direction west of Peskinoy with the goal of reaching the Oskol River. According to the channel, Russian assault groups are less than 4 kilometers from the riverbed, access to which will allow them to cut off some of the routes through which some units of the Ukrainian armed forces are supplied. In the first days of the military operation in Ukraine, Kupiansk was occupied by Russian troops. In September 2022, the city came under the control of Kiev. Fighting in this direction continues. The Russian army is likely shelling Ukrainian positions in Donetsk with a 122mm D-74 gun which was developed in the Soviet Union in the late 1940s according to Business Insider. As the media outlet reports, what is interesting about this weapon is not its year of manufacture, but the fact that it comes from Soviet stockpiles. The D-74 was not supposed to be the arsenal of Russia, as the Soviet Union began exporting these guns to friendly countries like Vietnam and China after their production. It was previously thought that the USSR had given away all its stockpiled weapons at that time. Therefore, the use of D-74 by Russian forces on the front lines in Ukraine may indicate possible imports of these systems or at least ammunition for them from North Korea. The agency suggests that Russia may be attempting to demonstrate the availability of huge resources. Additionally, the use of Soviet-era equipment may indicate that despite a quicker-than-expected restructuring of the armed forces, new production in Russia is still lagging behind battlefield losses. The appearance of the D-74 at the front is far from a common occurrence. During the Soviet era, a small number of these guns were produced, mostly for the needs of allied countries, including locally under license. Between the 1960s and 1970s, almost all D-74s were removed from Soviet arsenals and transferred to the Middle East and Asia. In Europe, these guns were used to a limited extent by Warsaw Pact countries, including Hungary, Poland, Bulgaria and the former German Democratic Republic, but were decommissioned, according to Militani media outlet. In addition, D-74s were and still are actively used by the armies of the North Korea, Vietnam, China and Algeria. According to open sources, they are in the arsenals of Zimbabwe, Mauritania, Nigeria and Sudan and were in service in Iraq, Egypt and a number of other countries. These guns were most actively produced by the Chinese industry under the Type 60 index and the DPRK produces ammunition from them and even has two D-74 based self-propelled artillery systems. M1981 and M1991. 
Given these facts, it can be assumed that the Russians had literally a handful of D-74s left and decided to put them into service, or they were transferred from the arsenals of their Russian partners.